Hello again, everybody, and welcome to The Warrior Report here on HBC TV 25. We are brought to you by Cost Cutters. I'm Justin Barrientos, along with Joe Getson, the uh, head volleyball coach at Winona State. Thank you for being here this year. Oh, my pleasure. I'm excited to get this started. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, we, we love to get more sports on the air and, and find out more about uh, some of the teams over at Winona State, and uh, we're glad that uh, you were one of the first ones to, to jump aboard for extra coverage here. Well, I appreciate you having us. All right. I want to talk uh, about you just a little bit and your history. You have a long history in volleyball that dates back to, I think, 1986 was maybe when you got your first um, coaching job. Um, how did you first get involved in volleyball? Where, where did the passion, the love for the sport come in for you? Well, one, you make it sound like that's a long time ago. It just was yesterday, <laughs> right, I thought. Right, exactly. Um, you know, I... I remember watching the uh, 72 Olympics and there was a little blurb on the Japanese team and I was in um, sixth grade or so and uh, went back to the PE teacher and um, we had like 20 guys on a side and I said that's not how you do it and, and ever since then I just I guess I always liked it. Um, I did play in college at a small school called George Williams College and George Williams was the founder of the YMCA. So it was an old Y school, and at the time, a lot of the Olympic volleyball coaches had come through George Williams. Um, so it had some history there with that. And, uh, you know, with an ankle sprain, I ended up um, going to a rehab place, and they actually ended up being uh, affiliated with the USA national team, and then also ran a juniors club uh, in the Chicago area, which was where George Williams was. And so, just got involved in coaching with them. Um, and then we made a move to Arizona. They had recruited, the University of Arizona had recruited one of my players uh, from that club. And uh, she was having a great career. And when I moved into town, uh, they heard about that and uh, asked me to join their staff. So I joined the staff uh, to the University of Arizona and. Um, just like yesterday, 1986. Yeah, and the rest is history. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk a little bit about uh, some of your uh, stops along the way. I know that I, I marked on a, a couple of different things, including professional volleyball. We'll get into that uh, uh, later on this season, but let's talk about Winona State. Uh, you've had very good success here, uh, fastest to 100 victories mm -hmm. in Winona State history. Uh, what was that like for you to, to hit that milestone last year? Well, it was, uh, to be honest, I didn't. I don't follow those stats at all, so uh, the girls surprised me on the bus, and. Uh, you know, uh, it's quite an accomplishment, and um, you know, I walked into such a great uh, situation. And uh, Winona State had the foundation in place for the team to be successful, and we've had some uh, amazing players, uh, and they've responded. And with that comes success. So it's been a, a fun ride. All right, let's talk a, a little bit, kind of recap last year. Uh, unfortunately, kind of a disappointing mm. season last year. You kind of had your your playoff fate in your hands uh, heading towards the last games uh, last year. Uh, your overall take on what happened last year? Well, you know, uh, you can rationalize it uh, hindsight-wise, but uh, we, we opened up the season. Uh, second day in, we had lost three players, three starters, two injuries, um, one of them with a career-ending injury, uh, Jordan Rungi, uh, who was a, a four-year um, solid player for us. And then we lost two starters to high ankle sprains, and uh, we had to play some people that, you know, just weren't ready for the rigors of the Northern Sun Conference. And with that, we struggled a little bit. You know, uh, I say that yet we were right about 500 in the league, uh, the toughest league in the in the country. So it's no no shame of what we did. Um, we were just used to more success than that, and and we were young. Um, so with that. You know, there's some trials and tribulation of how the season went, little ups and downs, and we ended up being one game out of the playoffs. Um, but I think it was a great learning experience because uh, a lot of those players are back now and they're a year older and a whole lot more mature. I'm glad that you mentioned the NSIC being one of the toughest conferences in Division II because I was going to ask you if that was your opinion. With all the <laughs> national champions that have come out of, of this conference, you know, what is it like to have to uh, plan for these teams that are nationally ranked and, and you yourselves being nationally ranked too? What is it like to have that grind every, every, day, every day? Well, we like it. Um, <laughs> you know, that's one of the reasons why um, I thought Winona State had a, an opportunity to be a nationally ranked team and, and compete for national championships because we're exposed to that level of play uh, every conference match. So um, 
at times, you know, you wish you had some easier ones, but then we end up playing some of those easier teams like in non-conference, and I'm like, God, I'm just glad we don't have to play that all the time because it's just no fun. Mm -hmm. So um, it makes the staff, it makes the players be a little bit more focused, and we come into every match having to be ready, and I think that keeps you at the top of your game. All right. Uh, well, speaking of your non-conference schedule, it starts uh, <coughs> fairly soon, September 6th. You'll be off in the Classic uh, facing Southern Indiana. Um, what is the, uh, the, the process of getting your team ready for, for that? Well, um, you know, we have four newcomers, so you spend a little bit of preseason just making sure everyone's acclimated. Uh, 13 returners, so we're carrying a squad of 17 this year. Um, I think we're in a really good spot. Um, the girls spent a lot of time here in town this summer. Um, they put in some hard work on their own, um, and that makes the transition uh, with new people that much easier. So right now it's just really kind of um, getting the rust off a little bit, so to speak, and then starting to implement offenses and defenses um, that we would put in place, kind of feeling out what our strengths and weaknesses are going to be and uh, kind of um, make plans to get the best out of the whole team. Um, overall for your team, it's, I guess you could say, a young team. You only have one senior, Alexis Bass, who's our guest today. Um, your thoughts on, on having that kind of a roster this year? Well, I think we're deeper than we've ever been. Um, I think the talent level is a little bit higher than what we've had. Um, so between player number one, if we were to rank them in 17, there's not as a broad of a range. Um, so that uh, lends itself to being able to go a little bit faster and implement things a little bit quicker and probably do things at a little bit higher level than we're used to. All right. Um, how much stock do you place in the preseason polls? You're picked seventh in the poll, but as we said, tough conference. Yeah. Um, you know, I think even seventh is uh, good for us uh, as a starting point. I like to use that more as locker room motivation. Um, you know, I think we have a team that can compete for a championship. Uh, looking at who everyone else has coming back, I think, um, and watching us play right now, I think we're in a great spot. Um, to do just that, and that's just compete for the championships. All right. Uh, you also have a new assistant coach uh, this Silver. year. Uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> talk about that and, and, and being able to acclimate them to the Winona State culture. Well, I was really fortunate to uh, keep Nicole Solom around for uh, my first five years here, and, you know, there's no doubt that you get into a, a rhythm uh, with your coaching staff, um, and Nicole has accepted and uh, is now coaching at Southeast Oklahoma, um, I was closer to some family down in Texas for her and, you know, um, she was ready and, and she's going to be a phenomenal head coach. So it was good for that opportunity to uh, come up for her. Uh, we've hired uh, Christine Fish, uh, or Pelkey, is recently married, um, and uh, she played in the league. She played at uh, Sioux Falls. She worked a little bit. She went back and got her master's at uh, the University of Sioux Falls, and then she was um, teaching in Madison and then coaching with one of the top clubs in uh, Wisconsin and with their sophomore team. And she had that team for two years, um, proved that she could get trained talent um, and then having that kind of exposure to Wisconsin, which is a big recruiting base for us, it was a, a no-brainer that she wanted to get into college coaching and we're excited to have her. And we also picked up a, a new GA, our, our GA's the last two seasons um, our past one, Danny Magis, is now an assistant coach at uh, Midlands University in Nebraska and uh, doing well there. And uh, we now have Melissa LeClaire, who played at Upper Iowa. She's a Minnesota girl, was a setter. She helped transform Upper Iowa into um, a very solid contender. And I think a lot of that was due to her. So I'm excited to have her join our staff and get her perspective on things. All right, very good. We do need to take a break here on the Warrior Report. When we come back, Alexis Bass will join us right after this. Perfect. 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 Getting the right look at the right price Perfect. is always in style at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507-454-6030. And welcome back to the Warrior Report here on HBC TV 25. We're now joined by Alexis Bass. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Now, as we mentioned, you're the, the only senior on the squad this year. Uh, tell us about that and the mentality going into the season, knowing that 
you're the only scene? Yeah, no, it's definitely a unique opportunity to have. Not everyone comes in on their own class um, and then ends up being the only senior, but um, I just take on a role that, that's just something that I'm really excited to be able to do. Um, and also to have really awesome um, upperclassmen as juniors to help me along the ride. So I'm just really excited to be able to lead this team in every way possible on and off the court and really honored to be able to do that. All right, now from what I understand, you kind of share something with your head coach that I didn't realize until I asked him, and that's you fell in love with volleyball by watching the Olympics as well, <laughs> the 2008 Olympics. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and, and, and what sparked your interest in volleyball. Yeah, so um, that was probably around it was the third or fifth grade um, watching the Olympics when Carrie and Misty May um, played. And so they were always huge role models of mine and just really awesome people too. And I just remember wanting to be like the next Michael Phelps because at that point I was a swimmer but I never really wanted to go competitively. And so just watching them and seeing the success that they had it really inspired me to be like, hey mom, I want to do volleyball now. And it was funny because the swimming place across um, from the volleyball club that I played out for years and years, um, they were just right across the street from each other. So it was a, a quick change, but it's something that I knew I wanted to do when I had role models as strong as Carrie and Misty May. All right, did that kind of start volleyball in your family then? Because it's kind of carried on since then. <laughs> yeah, so my parents never played volleyball. I think my dad did the whole recreational thing because, um, you know, he had the height for it too. But um, after I started playing, my sister was in soccer and basketball, and um, I think sometimes she admits it or doesn't admit it, but uh, <laughs> she started to play volleyball as well. So um, a couple years after I started, she started in middle school, and she um, has had a lot of success. She plays um, Division I uh, volleyball at Belmont in Tennessee and Nashville. So she's living it up there, and it's really excited that we get to share not only, obviously, being sisters and best friends, but to be able to share our sport, too. Oh, very good. Uh, what does Alexis bring to this volleyball team? Well, I don't think I've had a, a more natural leader than what uh, Alexis is. And, you know, it's on the court, it's off the court. Um, you can't ask for someone that is as dedicated to the team as what she is. All right, very good. Well, I you got to say this kind of interview thing is kind of old hat to you because uh, you had a very fun summer internship. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, no, I had a really awesome opportunity up at KTTC in Rochester, Minnesota, and um, I was specifically working in the sports department alongside Mark Palos and Pat Lund, who are just awesome people. Like, those two are so talented, um, but also mainly in news, just because there's not a million things that you can um, cover in sports in the summer. Um, and so I was just kind of sent out on my own every day to go ahead and cover random stories and look at the news board and then go get my coverage, interviews, come back, cut it, edit it, write to it. And so honestly, I learned more, I feel like, there in an entire summer than here at school because it's all about the experience. And just being surrounded by people that started kind of in the similar place that I did um, was really encouraging because it was a really hard process. Um, jumping head first, it wasn't even feet first, it was right in, in the gate. And so. Um, I was just really thankful to be able to work with people that are so talented and passionate about what they do, but also that just want to help me grow um, and become a better journalist and reporter because someday I hope to be as successful as them and even beyond that. So what is your ultimate dream then? What's, what would be your dream job if, if yeah. you could choose? My dream job would probably be sideline reporting for football just because I feel like I understand that sport the best. Obviously, besides um, volleyball, that would be a blast as well. Um, but if we're talking big screens, big dreams, that kind of thing, that would be awesome. Love traveling and talking to people, so Sidler reporting for that interviewing would be the ultimate goal. I always say the next Aaron Andrews kind of thing, so shooting for the stars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so last question then. Speaking of goals, do you have any goals set for this volleyball season? Yeah, of course, and so with it being my last year, which is kind of bittersweet, um, Ending a chapter, it's crazy to think that I have, what, like four months of volleyball for the rest of my entire <laughs> life after it being half my year uh, or half my life. Um, but definitely just leading in every way possible on and off the court and doing whatever I possibly can to get my team to be in the best position to win and accomplish our goals. And um, we've had a really awesome preseason and it's just flowed a ton. Um, and so the fact that we're starting at such a high level and feeling that potential for this entire season really just motivates me and gets me going um, as long as, as long with all of my teammates as well, um, that we can hang those banners and win those championships. And so um, I just want to be able to do that in every area that we possibly can. All right. Well, thank you both for joining us here. Oh, and good luck this you. season. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a break here on the Warrior Report. When we come back, we'll talk Warrior Women's Soccer. That's coming up right after this.
perfect. 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 Getting the right look at the right price. Perfect. Is always in style at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507-454-6030. And welcome back to the Warrior Report here on HBC TV 25. We're brought to you by Cost Cutters, and we'll switch to Warrior Women's Soccer. Matt Kellogg now joins us. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's uh, find out a little bit about you uh, since this is your second season at Winona State and the yep. first time we've really got to talk to you. Um, what's your history in soccer, and, and how did you get started in the sport? Uh, well, how I got started was that uh, I have three older siblings, they all played, and my parents didn't want to spend more money on other sporting equipment, so it was the case of uh, hand-me-downs got me started. Um, and then how I got into coaching was literally quite by accident. I had an injury uh, after college, had to go home and uh, spend time and rehab that. And the high school coach came and asked if I wanted to be part of his staff, and uh, the rest is, you know, as they say, history. I just fell in love with the game, and helped coach the high school boys team to a state championship. So I thought, oh, this is easy. Coach, win championships. So uh, soon I would realize that it's not that easy. Where did you play in college? I played at Butler University okay. in Indianapolis. Yeah. So, good. yeah. Okay, uh, now you have a background in Division One and Division Two, and now you're here at Division Two at Winona State. What mm -hmm. do you see as the difference in the, the play of soccer in Division One and Division Two? Uh, I would say if you asked me that same question 10 years ago, I would say that there, there was a pretty significant difference. Um, just the athleticism, the tactical awareness, the, just the game intelligence of the, of the players. But ask that question today and I'd say there's, there's very little. Um, soccer has grown in this country immensely. Not only the interest in the sport, but now the coaches who are coaching the little ones, they've played their whole life. So now instead of what I had was a dad who didn't play soccer, read it from a book, and was basically trying to stay one step ahead of us, you now have youth coaches who know the game inside and out, and they're passing that knowledge on. So really, Division Two, Division One, it's, it's more about what they want out of their college experience instead of she's a D1 athlete and she's a D2 athlete. That, those lines are very blurry now and it's just about the experience that they want. Okay, now uh, you have a year under your belt here at Winona State. Uh, talk us through that, that first season and kind of getting to know Winona State culture. How did the first season go? Wow, it was, um, you know, baptism by fire, jumping in the deep end, any cliche you want. Um, it, it's a fast season. It's a quick start even when you've been with a group for multiple years, but to come in and try and make changes basically in your season, that's very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we really relied on a great group of seniors to embrace what we were trying to do and to make that change. And right from the start, they were trying to embrace it. And it just took a little bit for them to actually understand the X's and O's. But like I said, right from the beginning, they were very receptive to let's try something different mm -hmm. um, and give it a chance. And then once we caught on to the system of play, you know, I think in our last nine games, we went seven and two. Um, so you can see once we figured things out, we were we were on a roll and we were tough, tough to beat. What was different in the previous years of Winona State soccer? And your philosophy coming in because uh, Ali Omar had been the only mm -hmm. head coach uh, and then there was an interim head coach before you and now mm -hmm. you come into the program. What were some of the things that you had to maybe try to change or what were some of the things you wanted to keep that were the same? Well, I think, it, you know, first and foremost, kind of speaking on the positive side of things is the, the winning mentality and the competitiveness. You, you walk in right away and you look on uh, you know, the walls in the, in the Hall of Fame and at the stadium and you see conference champ, conference champ, conference champ. So clearly there's a winning way here. Mm -hmm. um, and what we tried to express to the kids was that it's not better or worse, it's just different. I, I prefer to play a 4-3-3 system. Um, I know that the players in the past had been used to possibly, you know, more of like a 3-5-2. Mm -hmm. 
at the end of the day, it's semantics. It's where you put the pieces. But the ideas, I think, were very similar. And that's why the players were able to adapt so easily because it was a mindset of let's go out and get some goals. Let's be proactive in the attack and be organized in the defense. And then just where we put the pieces and where you know the previous staffs had put the pieces were just a little bit different. But the, the mentality and I think the overall theme was, was very similar. All right, I won't be asking you a lot of X's and O's, That's uh, at right. least for the start here. Um, but uh, you had, uh, I think it was, what, 24 goals scored uh, last season, and Abby Bohansky uh, had five of those goals, senior that graduated. Um, obviously, soccer is a low-scoring game, but mm -hmm. how do you try to generate maybe a little bit more offense and, and, and try to score some more goals? Well, obviously, that's going to be a big issue for us this year. Abby was a was a veteran. She was composed. She just had that mentality that she was not going to be denied. So you're not trying to, um, you know, fill her shoes. You're just trying to find a different way. And uh, I think what we have is a very good balance of now rising seniors. Um, you know, Courtney Weinsek, she is having a great preseason for us. She had a great spring. We're looking for a lot from her to basically now kind of fill that veteran role in our front line. And we have a lot of young players coming forward who are, you know, just really competitive. They know how to score. Uh, so I think early on it may be one of those goals by committee mm -hmm. um, until we can really start to figure out and dial in, okay, this is how we're going to attack. And now that player starts to get on a roll. Um, I'm sure you're aware, you know, just like with anything in life, it's also about confidence. Mm -hmm. And if we can get some early goals, that's going to breathe some life into our attack. And then we're just going to basically let them go and try and stay out of their way. <laughs> you also uh, graduated your number one uh, goalkeeper. And so you have a sophomore coming back that played a little bit mm -hmm. and then a freshman goalkeeper. Uh, how is your confidence in, in goaltending uh, coming up? Well, you now got, uh, got some action last year as a freshman. So... Uh, I, I don't anticipate her having any of those freshman jitters. Mm -hmm. um, so she's already handling herself like the number one. She's a veteran. She knows our, our language. She knows our system. Um, so I'm expecting her to come in right away and be very solid for us. Uh, the, the experience that she had last year, she did very well in. Um, and now just give her another year under her belt. Uh, so I expect big things out of her. And then Hannah, you know, our, our incoming freshman. She's already jumping in right away and giving Yanelle a run for her money, which you, you want that. You want that competitiveness. Um, you know, so I'm very pleased with how Hannah has stepped in uh, as a freshman so far. All right, and uh, final question for this segment. You're coming up on the 25th anniversary of soccer at Winona State. Does that make that kind of a special season this year? Yeah, we're trying to do some different things, um, some different logos and branding already with the players. And it's just, it's, it's that, you know, 25 years. That's, that's an accomplishment just to have something going for that long, um, not to mention all the success that the program has been had. Um, and what we're really trying to do is make sure that we're you know, mindful of the present and going forward, but also remembering where we came from and basically how we got to where we are, where we are a top contender every given year in the conference in the Northern Sun because of what those players and coaches who came before us did. Um, so we're trying to organize some events to, to help recognize them and uh, you know, just pay tribute to what they did for us. All right, we're going to take a break here on the Warrior Report. When we come back, Bridget Doran will join us right after this. Perfect. 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 Getting the right look at the right price Perfect. is always in style. At Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507 454 6030. And welcome back to the Warrior Report on HBC TV 25. We're brought to you by Cost Cutters, and Bridget Doran now joins us. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, again, let's, let's start with kind of uh, how soccer. You know, we got started with you and how you, how you enjoyed the game. Uh, St. Francis Prep in Illinois is where yeah. you came from in high school, but you probably started soccer well before then. Yeah. Uh, when was the first time that you played soccer? Um, I started really young, at like five years old. 
I have a twin sister, so we played together, and it was honestly the only sport we ever played, and we just loved the sport in general, and like the feeling of friendship it brought between teammates, and so it stuck with us all the way through here. Yeah, you have an interesting situation with your sister because she plays at Upper Iowa, yeah. so you're, you're rivals now. Yeah. Uh, what was that like when she decided to go somewhere else and in the same conference? Yeah, so we actually planned on never going to the same college because we wanted to be our own person. So we were looking at different schools and it just happened that we were looking at two schools in the same conference. And it's actually been such an interesting and like cool experience to be able to play against her and like my parents come and they'll sit in the middle of the stands in neutral <laughs> colors so there's no sides but it's honestly such a fun experience to play her all right you were named one of the co-captains uh for this year what was it like to get that honor it was really exciting i kind of knew that like there was girls on the team and a lot of our seniors stepped up and so to be named one of the captains was just such an honor that girls looked up to me and respected me enough to give me that title. All right, so in your perspective, uh, what does she bring to the team and, and I don't know if you had a, a, a voice in the co-captains or if that was a, a team honor. But. No, it's, it's one of those. We, we let the team vote on our captains uh, because they're the ones that have to kind of look up and, and follow those captains. So if there's not that respect and if it's coach driven, it's gonna end badly. Mm -hmm. um, Bridget is that steady voice in our defense. Her play is steady, her demeanor is steady. She doesn't go up, she doesn't go down. She's that even keel back there. And I think that's the voice that she gives the team. It's, it's never panic, it's never too happy, too sad. It just keeps us on a very steady plane. And uh, that's, that's one of the great things that she does for us. All right. I want to ask you about a highlight from last season against Minnesota Crookston. Yeah. You're able to score a goal, first I collegiate was. goal. Can you kind of walk us through that and, and tell us how the play developed and what happened there? Yeah, so I was taking a free kick um, kind of right by like the 15-yard line. And honestly, my thought wasn't to score. It was just to put it in play in the back post so someone else could get on it. And it just so happened to be placed perfectly enough to hit the back corner and score. And I honestly took a couple seconds to realize that it even <laughs> went in. I was so shocked, but it was so cool to like score a goal as a defender because normally as a center back too, it's harder to get up there and get chances. So that was super cool for me to experience. All right. You were also named the NSIC preseason defensive player to watch for Winona State. Uh, tell us about that honor and kind of how maybe the spotlight might be on you a little bit this year. Yeah, so that was um, exciting news to see that I had won that, but um, kind of humbling too. Like I know where I have to be and how I have to perform, so there is a lot of pressure, but nothing that I don't think I can handle. And so it's kind of just like showing what the experience in the games that I played last year and kind of helping the defense to just rise to that next level this year and just continue to keep doing the things that we need to do in order to succeed. Okay. Have you set any personal goals or are there any team goals for the season? Um, we've always talked about being in the top four for conference um, and that would get us a home game for conference play. Um, so that's one of our like big team goals and honestly we just take it game by game and try to find where our weaknesses is and um, improve on them. Um, personally, I just coming back from injury, I just want to like continue to play well and be the best that I can do for myself. So that's kind of just a goal right now. All right, and then uh, kind of finally here, uh, the season is starting soon, and we want to make sure that people get out and see the team. Uh, tell us about uh, the games coming up that you have. Well, our first three games, uh, unfortunately for fans here, are all on the road, mm -hmm. uh, our non-conference games, but then uh, conference play opens up and we're at home. So please you know, feel free to go to our website and see which games you can make. Uh, we promise excitement out there. There's going to be a lot of attacking soccer. Um, so hopefully it's a lopsided score and it's not, uh, we're not giving up goals, but it's going to be a great, great environment, uh, new uh, facility upgrades with our video board. So it, it's, uh, it's going to be great family entertainment.
All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us here today, and uh, good luck this season. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll see you a little bit later on in the year as well. Thanks. All right. Thank you for joining us here on the Warrior Report. We'll see you next week here on HBC TV 25.